Now you can see the part sort of starts to burn, but not really. Now it's just turning into a glowing hunk of carbon. All right, guys, today we're talking about PEC C from 3DX Tech. Now, PEC C is the leading variety of pack in 3D printable form using Arkma Kepsan Pack. Now, with exceptional mechanical abilities and a wide variety of temperatures, PEC C can withstand a number of testing and application environments. It is also amazing with chemical resistance, making it a great choice for industries like medical and manufacturing. Now, it's really important to note that Thermax PEC comes in two varieties, as well as other every other PEC out there, A and C or amorphous and crystalline. So this type PEC C is crystalline, which augments the mechanical properties associated with it. Namely, the PEC-C is a tougher and stronger material than its amorphous cousin. Here's the box and let's check out the spool real quick that you'll get when you get it off our online store. Now, cool thing about aerospace grade materials is they come in aerospace grade packaging. Now this stuff comes in a very, very thick metalized plastic in a vacuum sealed environment. So it is very good. You will still have to dry it as soon as you get it out of here, but this makes sure that it's as dry as possible when it gets to you. Interesting thing about PEC is if you were thinking about peak, chances are you should print in PEC instead because it's about 10 times easier. This stuff was made specifically for FDM and it's way easier to print and get all those specifications that you're looking for. Now, where are you actually going to see this in the real world? Specifically in the medical industry, it can be used for tool production, invasive implants, testing devices, uh, thanks to being highly sterilizable, and medical components housings, test device housings, and more. In the automotive industry, it's used for brackets, linkages, spacers, uh, caps. In aerospace, Boeing actually just certified it for use in in-flight parts, which is a huge step forward. In the food industry, it can be used for plating, Tupperware, food contact containers, which can be reheated and microwaved and more. So what kind of machine do you need to print this filament? Firstly, your nozzle is gonna have to be at least 345 Celsius, up to 375, and realistically up to 390 will print this stuff. Your bed needs to go to 110 to 120, preferably 150, 160, and it works great with our nanopolymer adhesive. And your chamber, you gotta have a heated chamber. You don't actually have to, but 80 Celsius or more is highly recommended because it does love to warp. I mean, all these plastics, especially if you're printing it in crystalline mode as opposed to fully amorphous and then annealing it, um, heated chambers always, always help. Now, as far as drying this filament, yes, you gotta dry it just like everything else. All plastics absorb a little bit of moisture, almost every plastic, and that needs to be dehydrated or removed from the filament before you process it or melt it, uh, because you'll get tiny little steam bubbles that'll come out and it'll ruin your mechanical performance, it'll ruin the look of the part, everything else, you've got to got to got to dry it. Now we did put together a whole pack of drying stuff that we use at our shop. It's the vacuum chambers and the oven. So you can get those on our website, visionminer.com slash dry kit. And we also made metal spools. So you can effectively dry these polymers even when they come on polymer spools that will melt at the high drying temperatures we use to dry them quickly. Now, if you're enjoying this breakdown and this is helping you out in any way, please hit that like and subscribe as it helps, helps us out on the algorithm. And we've got a lot more of this stuff coming. Anyway, let's talk about some of the basic material specs. Firstly, it's got a heat deflection temperature of 182 Celsius with a glass transition of 162, a melting point around 335 Celsius, and it is, of course, annealable. It can actually be annealed to go fully crystalline when you print it in the totally amorphous state, which is this color here. And when you anneal it, it will turn this color here. It'll look like peak after you anneal it. Now, you don't have to anneal it. You can print it and use that part. It'll be super strong. But when you do anneal it, you get that semi crystalline structure with great, greatly increases the heat deflection and the, the overall strength of the part. Now, regarding strength, you get around 3,200 megapascals in tensile modulus with the unfilled 
spec and 9560 megapascals with the carbon fiber version, both in ISO 527 standard testing. But do keep in mind that the orientation of the part and the design, the way you print it, is going to have a dramatic effect on the strength, and you're always going to lose a little bit of percentage in the z-axis, depending how it's printed. All the data sheets can be found on our online store at visionminer.com data, where you can also buy this filament and everything else we've got here on the table, so you can find the tensile modulus, the elongation, impact strength, and everything else. Now, let's talk about some specific environmental factors you'll want to consider when using PEC. This material is extremely good for UV, ultraviolet rays. It's a great choice for outdoor applications uh, for moderate lengths of time. Basically, it's not going to curl up and discolor and get all brittle over time in the sun. And hydrolytic resistance is excellent, meaning you can use it in water without it breaking down over time. Now, some of the chemicals you can use it with, uh, gasoline, it's great. Oil and hydrocarbons is very good. Acetone, it's awesome. Uh, chlorine's good. Sulfuric acid, and hydrochloric acid, it's all good. This stuff is absolutely insane. As far as electrical properties, it's a highly insulative material until you get the carbon fiber in there, which does take the surface resistivity up to 10 to the 9th, making it a static dissipative material. But for the vanilla version, the regular stuff, it is a super good insulator. As far as biocompatibility, certifications, and sterilization goes, it does have certifications for biocompatibility and more and more stuff coming out with time as it is a relatively new material to the world. Uh, now, you will need a certified grade if you're going to implant it in someone and we can get that for you, but this regular stuff is still good. Now, it's very, very similar to Peak and Ultim for the inherent flame resistance with the UL94 V0 FST rating as well as the food safe rating of NSF 51 and it's great for sterilization making it awesome for autoclaves and gamma radiation and other types of sterilizing in the medical industry. Uh, so let's just dive in real quick we'll talk about some of these example parts here on the table. We've got some different colors of parts. Mainly you'll notice that some parts are light tan and some parts are dark tan. All right there we go and some of them are both like this one right here. Now this is PEC. When you print it, normally it will be this clear, translucent, sort of looks exactly like Altum, basically. But as soon as the temperature reaches a certain point, it's going to crystallize. And as you can see here, the center of this turbine has actually crystallized. Now, you can also see that occurring on the top of this little, uh, this fluid, this hose clamp fitting thing. I, most of the stuff that we print and pack uh, is buried in NDA. So 90% of the time, I don't even know what it's for. 80% uh, of the time, the person sending it to me doesn't know what it's for, and we can't show it to you. So we got some stuff here to show. Uh, just know it's used in space and aerospace and medical stuff where people don't like to tell everybody what they're using it for. Anyway, uh, we got some other parts. We got the obligatory benchy, of course, in beautiful amorphous pack. Now if we anneal this, of course it would turn totally tan, but let's look at the actual turbine comparison. So these are the exact same part, they came out the same, and we annealed the one uh, in my left hand. And as you can see, it completely changed colors and went crystalline. Now, when you anneal stuff, especially pack, you will lose a little bit of dimensional accuracy. It, it might warp depending on the geometry of this part itself, you know, if these uh, these spires started out straight, you can see there it's having a little bit of warpage. It's it's not exactly perfect. There's a couple ways around that, you know, whether you're using investment casting or carbon fiber, that helps a ton. But when you anneal, you know, it's great, it's way stronger, but it comes with its own challenges. Now this is the jig fixture part that we did and we printed it amorphous and it's completely tan because we annealed it. Uh, very, very interesting. <laughs> Definitely a crazy part. Here's one more where you can see it printed mostly clear-ish amorphous, but you can see certain areas where it did crystallize. Now it is important generally to try and do the whole part amorphous before getting to the crystallization, but regardless, we're gonna break and burn some of these parts for you right now. Let's get into it. Uh, so we've got this vase. 
This is gonna be cool. We're gonna burn this. I've got this sample part, which we do provide on the website of every material that we sell. If you need to test it in your specific environment, acids, chemicals, heat, whatever, let us know. We'll send you a batch of these uh, to do your testing on. We have these available. Just give us a call and we'll hook you up. But we're gonna do start with two brake tests. And uh, safety first, always wear your, sun, your glasses here because this stuff can explode in, um, in ways you don't expect. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put this here tight in this vise. I'm just gonna see how much it bends and how it breaks. Let's see if it explodes or, oh God. Yeah, where'd that go? I don't know where that went. Um, now this part, unlike the actual sample bars that we send out, was printed hollow with infill. Normally they're solid, the ones we send it send to you. So the breaking will be a little bit different, but as you can see, that broke really well without just going along the layer lines. It actually broke across and down and sort of uneven, which is a good, good sign. So let's break the vase. Let's see if uh, my thumbs, what happens? Is it going, is it brittle? Is it tough? What's gonna happen? I don't know, let's find out. Ooh, yeah. Just punched a hole straight into that puppy. Am I bleeding? Nope, not yet. <laughs> All right, interesting. Look at that break though, straight down the layers. I don't even see any layer breakage. Even this little spot right here isn't breaking directly across, across the layer lines. Even up here, it goes up and down between multiple layers several times. So it's very good layer adhesion. So much better with PEC than with PEAK uh, and even some other materials. Now if I take this out, Ooh, that's one of the cool things. It does print translucent, so you can sort of see through it there. You can see my thumb. But uh, let's uh, let's break out the buff of fume extractor because safety first, and uh, let's burn this stuff. By the way, as far as holding it down to the bed, nanopolymer adhesive works fantastic. That's what we use all the time for literally everything. We've tried other high temperature adhesives, and they don't work nearly as well for nearly as many materials. And we were hoping they would, but they just didn't. Anyway, nanopolymer adhesive available at visionminer.com. So let's turn on this fume extractor. Because fumes, we got these available on the website too. This thing's like 700, 800 bucks or something like that. And uh, I use this for soldering. I use it for grinding stuff. I'll put it next to stuff that I'm grinding. Let me uh, get that one right there, okay. Now, I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna do a 10 second burn test. We're gonna see if we can actually anneal this on the fly. So I'm gonna start at the top here, use that little testing area. And uh, let's see how much it smokes, uh, if it goes out by itself, etc. cetera. Here we go. Three, four, five, six, eight, nine. I see very little. Okay, now got a little bit of flame, but it just kind of went back to uh, not much happened. Let's do it with this little part. Let's see what happens here. Let's just let's just wash this. Direct flame. Oh yeah, see that warping? Crazy. Now let's see if it crystallizes. So with PEC, when it crystallizes, it's actually a function of time as opposed to an actual temperature. If you take certain materials up to a certain temperature, boom, it'll crystallize. With PEC, generally it actually needs to be there for enough time for the plastic to fully crystallize. It's very interesting stuff. I've sat on a, in a couple lectures for it and it just always straight over my head. Uh, ooh, actually, you know, I think we got a little bit of crystallization in there, maybe. It changed colors a little bit. Kind of hard to say. Interesting. Let's burn the crystallized stuff. See how that works. I don't know if you can see this in the camera still. Hopefully you can. But let's do it. See what happens here. If it's like peak, nothing at all will happen. Okay. All right. Do we have any flame? And a little bit of flame? Nope, no flame. It just bulges out, smokes for half a second, and then, and then goes out. And if I... Uh, it is still kind of soft, but man, interesting. All right, let's do one more on this bad boy. I'm just gonna put it up right into here, just cause why not? We got it on camera, right? Let's do it, let's burn it. 
for you, for science, for you and science. Okay, now we're capturing all the heat up in the top part. So hopefully we start to see maybe a little bit of effect up there. God, here we go. Now you can see the part sort of starts to burn, but not really. Now it's just turning into a glowing hunk of carbon. I'm gonna really put it up there. Oh, we're burning the label. See, that label is gonzo. God, this has been, what, 30 seconds of flame? It's not even burning. I mean, it's sort of burning. Now, let's see what happens. <laughs> I'm not gonna put my finger through that. Let's, uh, let's just hit it. Oh, it's still soft. Because it's hot. Wow, but it's not really breaking down too much. We cool it off a little bit. You'll see on the top there, we got the crystallization happening. That's pretty cool. But as far as this goes, it's hard. I can break off some carbon bits, but not much. Crazy. Good times. All right, that's the BOFA available on our website as usual. We've got PEC in carbon fiber, PEC A with carbon fiber, which is the amorphous, you cannot anneal it. We've got PEC C and PEC C with carbon fiber. So if you're interested in printing this material, we've also got the machines and the tools and accessory to make it easy for you. And we're here to help. So also we've got a print service too, if you don't want to do it yourself. Anyway, go ahead and leave a comment below with any other tests you'd like us to do or anything else you want to see in this material in the future. And we'll be sure to take note of it and hopefully do that very soon. Anyway, Thanks for watching, have a positive rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next video.